Hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So this is going to be part one of the many videos that are about to come out for creating a library system using simple um, libraries within Python. So what we're going to essentially be doing in this tutorial is using this um, dummy website that someone has kindly created and scraping basically all of the books that have been hosted on them and all the details related to the books. So for example, if you look at the book, we've got the image of the book, the name of the book, and the price and availability as well. Now what we're going to be doing in today's tutorial is collecting all the data that's going to be going into our library system that we're going to be coding in the next few tutorials. So first things first, um, you want to head over to the books.toscrape.com website, which is basically the dummy site I was talking about. And then you can have a brief look around the site. What you'll notice is that it's a pretty simple layout. Um, all the books have been laid out. You can then you can click on individual books to basically show more details, but we're not going to be doing so because all we need is the image of the book. Uh, we just store that in case. We're going to keep the title of the book, uh, the price, and then the availability of whether it's in stock or not. So what we're going to do first is open up VS Code, and in VS Code. <clears throat> we're going to import the libraries that we're going to be using. So first off, we're going to be using the requests library, which should be default installed uh, in Python. Then we want the uh, beautiful soup library, uh, which you will need to install using pip or conda, whichever you prefer. So beautiful soup is going to help us pass the text that comes in from the uh, page that we scrape and then turn it into a navigatable object so that we can find certain HTML elements like headers, links, etc. So I've loaded in the two libraries we need. Uh, we're also going to import pandas because we are going to want to save the data that we collect from scraping into like a CSV file so that we can later on use it in our library system. So what we're going to do next is we have a uh, dictionary here. And now what I like to do as common practices in uh, my scraping tutorials is making the use of proxies. So making the use of proxies not only keeps you anonymous online, but also um, helps you switch between different countries and IP addresses, which will obviously prevent you from being rate limited from websites when you're trying to scrape data from them. Now, obviously, for the sake of this tutorial, you may not be banned or rate limited from the website we're scraping from, but to be sure that we don't get banned or rate limited, we're going to be using IP Royal, who have kindly sponsored today's tutorial. IP Royal is a proxy service provider providing safe, private, and unrestricted access to online information. With a pool of over 2 million plus reliable IPs, IP Royal allows clients to use a proxy server as an intermediary between their devices and the web, which, which allows clients to maintain their privacy and use resources they can't access directly due to geo restrictions, etc. IP Royal's data center proxies can serve as a great product for businesses or users looking for premium high-speed anonymous private proxies, which usually have unlimited bandwidth and no extra charges. For data scraping though, I would recommend using IP Royal's re residential proxies as they not only allow anonymity when scraping websites, which can help avoid getting rate limited, but also lets you select the geolocation of the proxy, either through the dashboard or by making minor changes in your code. Lastly, IP Royal handles automatic IP rotation, which not only allows easy integration within your code, but they also provide the option to use static IPs in case that you decide to keep an IP for a longer duration of time. In this video, IP Royal has given me access to their discount codes, which will give you a straight 30% discount on your Royal Residential proxies. The discount code is Johan30 and can be used to buy their Royal Residential proxies. So guys, please make sure to grab your discount codes and make your purchases for Royal Residential proxies today from IP Royal or you'll be missing out on a great deal. Now that we've uh, looked at the benefits of using IP Royal, what we want to do is head on over to the uh, dashboard of IP Royal, which I've already logged into. As you can see, I have the traffic remaining uh, in my dashboard. Here you can select all the different parameters for your um, proxy. So I want mine to be in the United Kingdom, in the London region, and I want my IP to be on rotation, which means that I don't want a static IP address. I want my IP to be changed constantly. 
So what you want from here after you've set up all of these different settings is this uh, basic call URL example down here. You're going to want this link uh, which starts at the HTTP and ends at the port number right here. We're going to copy that and then we're going to need to paste that into our proxies dictionary that we created a second ago. So let's create the speech box. Now, first things first, we need to create an HTTP key. And then next, we are going to need to create an HTTPS key. Now, for us, uh, both HTTP and HTTPS proxies are running on the same uh, URL, so no issues there. Let's run both of these parameters. And now we're ready to basically scrape from our site securely, obviously, with proxies. So let's go back to the uh, page that we want to scrape from. And then we'll expect inspect a few things. So let's inspect the page. Let's inspect the image first because we want to obviously scrape from the image. Usually these whole things are stored stored within a single container, which is called a div in HTML. So if we manage to grab that div, we should easily manage to grab all of the details inside it as well. Let's see. So if we look carefully, when I highlight over product pod, which is the class product pod right here, <coughs> it's got a article type element. What we'll see is that all of the elements we're looking to scrape is inside that uh, class called product pod. Now, if we go further on, we see the class is obviously repeated across all of the books that we see. So what we're going to need to do is copy this class name and then we're just going to head over and scrape that. Now before that, obviously, you want to copy this URL uh, and then make a request to that URL. So we'll do uh, response equals r.get, which means we're using the request library to get the text content of this page. And we're going to provide the proxies argument because we are using proxies. And we're going to use the dot text to basically extract the text from the response that is obtained. Let's run that. We'll take a bit of time, I believe. Three seconds, not bad. Now, when we look at this, it's just a bunch of HTML text, which is essentially all the content that is shown on the page, but in text format. Now, we're going to have to convert this into browsable or navigatable uh, object, which is going to be our soup. Uh, beautiful soup is going to help us do this. So we create a new variable called soup, and then we're going to call beautiful soup, and then run response.text uh, as the text that needs to be converted into soup. So we run that and we get rid of this dot text because I just forgot we've already done it up here. And we should have a navigatable object. It already looks a lot cleaner as well because it's pretty fine. So now we can look for the use the dot find uh, method to basically find the article element which had the class name of uh, what class name did it have? It had the class name of product. Uh, underscore pod. So we're going to copy that and then we're going to paste it back into our class argument. So when you run this, what you'll notice is that it's gathered uh, the first uh, class instance which has uh, the class of product pod. Now obviously it has all the details that we need which are the image link which is right here. It has the uh, title of the book right here, it has the price right here, and then the availability right here. So what we're going to want to do first is um, you instead of grabbing just the first element from the um, website, we're going to want to grab all of the product pod elements so that we're grabbing all of the books from the page and not just the first page. So instead of using find, we're going to do find all. What this is going to do is it will return a list instead of a single element because it's returned all of the um, product pod classes on the page, on the first page. So what we need to do now is maybe store this into a variable. So I'm going to call this, um, well, let's see, what should we call this? Let's call this um, book container equals. Now we're going to do for book because we need to iterate through each of those books in the list. So for book in book container, uh, we're going to do book.find. Now what we want to find here is obviously we want this link right here. 
So if we look closely, the link is uh, in an HTML element called IMG, which is image. So we want to find image and in image, uh, that image tag has a class of thumbnail. So we can use that as well. So we'll do class equals thumbnail. And then essentially what you want to do is access the SRC attribute of this uh, image tag, which has a class of thumbnail. So let's see if that works. I'm going to put a break tag in here so that we only iterate for the first element and not go through the whole thing because that will take us some time. Now, as you can see, uh, we can, we've we got the URL for the first image. Perfect. But what you'll notice is that when we try to paste this URL into the... Um, into the browser it's not going to come up because obviously it's broken now what we need to do is append the first part of the url which is this onto the onto the um, remaining part of the url that we just scraped when we combine them both we have an image perfect so let's do that really quickly we can do uh, book image url is equal to that string that we just copied, so up until media, uh, actually get rid of media as well, up until that, plus whatever we find in here. Now, when we print book image URL, we should be able to see the exact URL, and when we click on it, voila, the image shows up perfectly fine. Okay, now for the next thing that we want to get from the book container. What we need next is the book title. So we have to see where we can find that. So if you look at it carefully, we can see it's within the um, h3 tag in HTML. So we'll do book title equals book container dot find h3. It doesn't have a class name and there's only one h3 in that uh, div so it should be fine to just use h3 without a class and then when we do we can just do we want to grab the title attribute so i'm going to print out also the book title uh, there we go object h3 where am i getting an error Oh, sorry, I did book container. It should have been um, book dot find. Book container is the entire list. So we don't want to go through the entire list. We want to go through just the first instance. So if we run that now. Kiara title. Um, let's see. Oh, we don't want to grab the title. Sorry. We want to grab the text from inside. So we just want to do dot text. Apologies for the errors. So when we do dot text, it will basically just grab the uh, text that is inside that H3 element right here. Perfect. So we've got the title of the book. We've got the image URL. Now, next thing we want to get is the price of that book. So we can see that it's in a paragraph, uh, paragraph element of HTML and it's got a class of price underscore color. So we do the same thing. Book underscore price is equal to book dot find. Um, and then we do p because it's in a paragraph uh, element and we also have a class so we might as well mention it class equals uh, price underscore color and then basically we want to do dot text to only keep the text element which is this bit here let's see what we get let's print out print book underscore price here we are, we get the book price, but we have this uh, unwanted character right here and the pound sign we need to get rid of as well because we're going to be storing it as a float later on. So we're going to do dot replace, which basically replaces an instance in the text with whatever you want. So we're replacing this um, pound sign and the a, a uh, weird A with an accent with nothing. So when I run this again, voila, it only comes up with the number, which is what we need in the price variable. Now, last but not the least, we're going to be scraping the availability of the item. So we're going to use the p tag and the class is going to be in stock availability. Let's just copy this class name so I don't make a mistake typing it up. Copy. And now we can basically store the availability. So I'm going to do book availability equals book.find, paragraph tag again. And then the class is going to be what we just copied. 
let's print that out print book availability and let's see what we get and we see we get the whole element well the whole content inside the paragraph tag but we don't want that we only want the text inside it so we do just dot text uh, up here text okay cool now we got just the text but we see that there's a lot of white space around the text so we use the dot strip method to get rid of any white space and nice we have everything that we need now now we can uh, essentially get rid of the break statement here and if we run this it should go through all of the books that we just scraped on the first page and print out their details like so perfect so now we've essentially built a scraper that takes the content from uh, this page right here and then uh, stores it in our code but we have around a thousand results to go through and we've only gone through one page so far now there's 50 uh, <clears throat> there's 50 overall pages that we can scrape let's see if there's a common pattern um, in the URL bar that we can go through uh, for these 50 pages so if I do next it goes catalog page 2.html I do next again and it goes catalog page 3 so the only thing that is essentially changing is the number right here so this let's try and change this to 1 and as you can see it takes us to the first page if I take this to 51 I'm guessing it will crash because it said there's only 50 pages so if I change this to 50 should be fine because there's 50 pages so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this url right here and we know that changing that one number in the url is going to allow us to um, switch uh, switch to the next page so i'm going to replace this static url with this url right here and then i will um, move all this code into a single cell so copy this i mean cut that and then paste it in here same uh, container as the loop essentially paste that in here as well get rid of this now what we want to do is write a loop so we know there's 50 pages so we want to write a loop which goes through 50 numbers essentially so for i in range 1 comma 51 the reason why we're doing 51 is because we're not going to start from zero we're starting from one so we need to account for one extra number and then if we just print out oh, if we just print out i here and comment out the rest of the code it will print out numbers from 1 through to 50 which is what we essentially need now that we have that working we can push this code one end and forward and change the static number 50 so we're going to change this string to an f string and we change the static number 50 to the variable i which is basically the number which goes from 1 all the way to 50 um, which will switch through all of our different pages. Now we've got the pages working as well. Uh, there's only one bit missing, which is storing all of our data. So I'm going to create a variable called data and then resolve that into an empty list. Now, instead of printing this data, we're going to be writing, appending it to our list uh, called data. So we'll append. And what we're going to be appending is a dictionary, which will have different keys and values. So book image url is going to be set to book image url then we move on to the next thing book title is going to be set to book title uh, book price is set to book price um, lastly book availability will be set to book availability cool so we've got four things that we'd scraped one two three four and we've got all of those four things that we're saving inside our uh, list called data so now that we're done with that we're basically just going to print a um, let's just print up here as soon as we scraped one page uh, we will write in a message which will say print uh, scraped uh, i so what the current page is out of 50 pages for the sake of this tutorial i'm only going to scrape let's say one page worth of data but which is why i'm putting the break statement right here if you guys want all of the data which you should get all of the data do not put this break statement here let the code just run through all of the pages 
So let me run the code and hopefully we should have one page worth of data in our data list. Let's look once it's done. Okay, it says scraped one out of 50 pages. Let's look at data. Beautiful, it's got one page worth of data. So the first book is a lie in the, and the last book is it's only the Himalayas. Let's see, this is from page one. Yep, it's correct. Perfect. So last, the last thing we want to do in this tutorial is convert this data uh, list into a uh, pandas data frame, which is nothing but a formatted uh, table that you can then save to a CSV file onto your um, computers. So we want to import pandas as pd here. Run that cell again, and then we're going to do pd dot data frame which will convert our data list into a data frame and then we can view the data frame and as i told you it looks like a nicely formatted table what we can do next is just use the dot to csv uh, method and then save it as um let's say library database.csv and we set the index to false because we obviously don't want this column to, to be saved it's just a useless column we're not going to need it for now i mean we usually you, you could use it but we're not going to be using it now um once we run that it should create a new file right here as you can see and it's a csv file that can be opened in excel as well but obviously i'm not going to um but yeah that's basically it for today's tutorial, guys. Um, if you find this tutorial interesting and would like me to resume it into creating the full-fledged library system, please let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to request any other types of videos as well, please let me know. And I'll see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace.